Hey, welcome back to another episode of Razorback Reels. I'm Adam Roberts. And I'm Aaron Imsall. All right, we've got a few movies for you that we saw this weekend, but as you know, it is President's Day. Ta-da! Yay! So, you know, one of our top five favorite February holidays. So we decided <laughs> to give you a quick overview of some of the greatest presidents, real and fictional, in the movies. So stay with us. <laughs> Three movies that, or at least between the yeah, two between of us. between the two of us, we saw three. Right, yeah. busy weekend. But uh, first off, we'll go with Confessions of a Shopaholic. When I was seven, most of my friends stopped believing in magic. That's when I first started. They were beautiful. They were happy. They didn't even need any money. They had magic cards. Rebecca Bloomwood, dress. Zach Posen. Belt, Todd Oldham Vintage. Bag, Gucci. All right, Confessions of a Shopaholic, uh, directed by PJ Hogan and starring Isla Fisher. Now, this movie is basically about this girl that uh, loves shopping more than anything else in the world, which the title also tells you right off. But it's all about her journey to try to get a job. And this kind of sounds like something maybe you've seen in, in Legally Blonde or something on, like a co comedic version of Sex in the City <laughs> or something. But, uh, you know, th this movie is carried by the performance by Isla Fisher. She does a fantastic job. You really like, you know, the energy she brings to this role. And, the, and, the, and she's even really funny in this role. But I think the only downfalls in this movie to me is, I know last week I was worried about my masculinity after <laughs> liking He's Just Not That Into You. Well, I'm glad to say I didn't like it as much as that. But I did enjoy it. But the problem was that I don't think the rest of the movie really falls together with the performance that she puts. There's a lot of really predictable and kind of what you expect in cliched parts of the movie, but you can't help but like Isla Fisher's performance, and I think that's what I right. really enjoyed about this. I mean, that's why, I mean, I agree with you that a lot of the plot was cliched, especially the romantic angle. I was like, okay, we've seen this before. <laughs> yeah, yeah ne but little hint, never lie to somebody when you're dating them, and if you do... <laughs> I don't get that. It's, it's a usually a good idea to fess up instead of take a long, dramatic pause and wait for somebody to bust in the room before you, because you won't get the chance again. But uh, anyway, I really loved Isla Fisher. I mean, I gave it a B because I am such a huge fan of hers, and I just loved her in this role. I thought she was terrific. Now, like you said, the rest of the plot around here, not so much. I would yeah. have liked to see uh, her get some better roles in the future. But for what she had to work with, it was really great. And for the type, you knew what you were getting into when you went to see this movie, and it was better than I thought it was going to be. So I gave it a B. I enjoyed it. There was never really any time where I was sitting, you know, checking my watch. There was none of that the whole time I was engaged, so that earns it a B. I agree. I mean, it, it wasn't at a point where you were wondering, like, oh, is this movie going to be <laughs> over with already? Come on. And I kind of liked uh, John Goodman in it. I did uh, like John It was Goodman. nice. I mean, John Goodman always brings a little bit to each role he does. And again, he did the same thing. He had a tiny John role. John in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of cameos. Joan Cusack yeah. and uh, yeah. the girl, girl from SNL. Airplane, Julie Haggerty. Had yeah. Had a nice little yeah. cameo. I, was, yeah, I saw her. I was like, hey, yeah, that's <laughs> Julie Haggerty. <laughs> All right. Airplane. But really, the reason to see this movie in which we kind of beat to the right. dead horse here, but it is Isla Fisher, who is, who is fantastic. But otherwise, it's kind of like your normal kind of rom-com. And I guess it was a big novel. Uh, yeah, a bunch of very popular they like to novel. the plots of two novels in this series yeah, and to so come up with this. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's very popular for that. So if you're fans of the novel, you'll probably love this movie. And once again, the Geidegger Rushiel in the theater was about the same <laughs> exactly. as He's Just Not That Into You. I think if you're a guy, I would recommend He's Just Not That Into You over Confessions of a Shopaholic. I agree, definitely over that one. I, and that's what I think yeah. as well. So. so if your girlfriend's like, pick one of these two. Go with He's yeah. Just Not That Into You. All right, well, Friday the 13th. <laughs> Did you know the young boy drowned here? He wasn't a very good swimmer. The counselors weren't paying attention. All right, Friday the 13th. It's about a guy in a hockey mask who goes around stabbing naked teenagers. I think you already know what this is going to be like. I, I, okay, if, if you've seen the other Friday the 13th movies, you'll 
probably like this one if you like the other ones. It's just the exact same thing. With Rob Zombie, when he uh, sort of rebooted the Halloween franchise, or at least tried to, I don't know if they're doing a sequel or not, it, he at least put a lot of effort into it. He did a little bit of reimagining. He used some creativity. This is just, it's so bland and boring. They added nothing. They didn't try anything that I haven't seen a million times. They did, okay, they did spice up the plot just a tiny little bit, but it was really just very, very boring to me. I was like, okay, all right, I know what's going to happen next. It felt like I was watching the original again. Well, Adam, on this President's Day, I have to say <laughs> that I have a, a dream and I have a goal that one day Adam will like a slasher film and not hey, and give it above a D+. Plus. I gave The Ruins a good grade. Not a slasher film, The Ruins. Uh, if you like Friday the 13th, and if you're a fan of the series, this movie has a lot of th hidden things into it, a lot of homage stuff. The whole, there's a scene at the famous barn, which you'll know if you're a, a fan of the series, the barn. There's wheelchairs on the wall, which you, if you know from Friday the 13th too, about the wheelchair victim. There's a lot of stuff there. So it's Jason sort of can the, run in this. It's Jason sort can of run the in this die movie. another day of Friday the 13th movies, just throwing a bunch well, of no, pointless No, I'll homages. say this is good. This is the same director that did Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, which I thought was a pretty good remake well. And this movie isn't really a remake. It's more like a sequel to the first yeah, one, not, but in yeah. an homage frame, because they it, it, it recognize the first movie, and then they kind of say, hey, this is going to be our new take on the sequel, but we're going to throw a lot of homage moments. There's a lot of great Jason kills. If you look for those Jason kills, if you like the first ones, this one's got several good Jason kills. One under a dock that I especially like, <laughs> that uh, includes Dancing with Stars alum Willa Ford, who also does a little naked uh, ski... Uh, Water skiing, so yeah. that's something that hasn't been as well in a See what Friday dancing 13th. with the stars can really launch your career. That's right, it launches towards, your career. I have yeah. actually happened to enjoy this Friday the 13th. Um, I think it's consistent with the ones in the past. If you like it and if you're not a stickler, like, oh, it'll never live up to the old ones. First of all, the old ones, I, I think you forget. I mean, outside of any, really any of them, they're all cheesy. They all have the, why would anybody in the world make I that? I would have given the first one a C, I think, if I saw it today. No, I, I don't think so. One, the first one scared me a lot more than this did. Well, maybe. Yeah. The first one is a lot different than the rest right. of them. The rest of them are all, the first one is, it really shouldn't even be the same category than the rest of them, because the rest right. of them are all just about Jason's kills right. and right. Jason the Supernatural. And this sort one, of he's a more human. story, right. And, yeah, this movie is not to be taken serious with. It's, it's to be taken with a grain of salt and knowing what you're getting into. But if you know what you're getting into when you go see this, I guarantee you'll have a blast with it. I, did, I don't. I just like them to at least stretch a little bit. Like with Shopaholic, I knew what I was getting into, but they stretched a little bit. They made it better. Friday the 13th, they didn't do anything. They just took the same script and, you know, changed the names and added some uh, kills. Jason runs. That's all i got to say. Wow. Jason's yeah, never run before. Because I completely... He was, didn't even really run. He just sort of half jogged, oh. like when you're late for the bus and you don't want to look like you're running. And there's tunnel action, which there's never been tunnel action before. So there's new stuff. Don't let Adam fool you. There's new stuff here. <laughs> well, let's see. It just may be subtle. The this International subtle. is a movie for, that I didn't like for the same reasons. So let's play the trailer. Ago, we began receiving intelligence regarding the International Bank of Business and Credit. Anyone that's ever been in a position to move against this bank has either ended up dead or disappeared. You are accusing the world's largest bank of conspiracy and murder. All right, The International with Clive Owen and Naomi Watts. It sort of, uh, it's, it's supposed to be some sort of a thriller where you're learning more about the bank's intrigue. Clive Owen is investigating. I don't, I never figured out who, okay, he worked for Interpol, but I never really figured out who was investigating whom, and it's not a good the plot thing. is just so convoluted and messed up, it seems like they did it on purpose because they really didn't want to throw anything there, so it's completely implausible, a bank would never have any, even, I mean, even if they were completely evil, I don't know why they would do the things that they did in this, but the problem is, if you're going to make a conspiracy thriller, you want the conspiracy to unfold slowly over the course of the movie, you don't use the first two scenes to unfold the entire conspiracy and then have Clive Owen go and investigate it. He doesn't learn anything he didn't already know from the very beginning of the movie. So it was, you know, really boring from that aspect. So say, okay, we'll look at this at like it's a cool action movie. And it's not a cool action movie. They have one cool action scene in the entire film when they go to the Guggenheim. And that was pretty cool, even though it was still a little bit too ridiculous and silly to take as seriously as I think they wanted you to. Uh, Naomi Watts, okay, I love Naomi Watts. 
she was horribly miscast in this role. It was like it was really I was covering my face like, oh <laughs> no. They had she has this dialogue where she's has, you know, some swear words to show that she's tough. She's one of the <laughs> tough career women. But she swears so awkwardly. I think this might be the first time she's ever said the F word in her <laughs> entire life. It is really just that bad. So it's like she's just got left church camp and now yeah. she's wanting to be tough. And yeah, tough it's one of those kids, you know, okay, I gotta make friends with the druggies. And it's just, it just doesn't work at all. I mean, well, that's I like this, I really Adam. love this sort of movie and it was so disappointing. Well, you're depressing me because I do love Clive Owen, I do love Naomi Watts, and I didn't get a chance to see it because of just a busy yeah. weekend. So you just really depressed me because okay. I, I wanted to. I wanted to like this. I did want to. I did want to add. I do the very last last scene of the movie. I did like. Hmm. So if your friend rents it on DVD, just skip to the end. Skip an hour and forty minutes. Skip an hour and forty minutes and just see okay. the little duet machina out of nowhere because I did. I did like that. I am <laughs> a fan. Advice. I am a fan yeah. of the crazy endings. But, great uh, advice. All right. Well, we were, are going to take our break early because we have a lot of presidents to talk about. Right. So here's our trivia question. What, who turned down the role of president in the 1995 film, The American President? Interesting. And it was Robert Redford who turned down the role of president in The American President. Oh. Of course, went to Michael Douglas instead. Hmm. So, I wonder how that would have worked with Redford. He probably wouldn't be presidential enough at that time. I don't know. Yeah, and I mean... I don't know. I don't know if he could pull off a president role. Yeah, I don't know either. He'd always be the president who just puts his feet up on the desk <laughs> and he's like, all right, get me coffee. <laughs> Good point. Okay. But, uh, all right, we have a lot of presidents to get through, so we're just going to show some quick clips, and we'll do this in chronological order, starting with 1915, Abraham Lincoln in The Birth of a Nation. Controversial oh. birth of a nation. We're we're stoking the fire tonight. All right. Hey, well, D. D. W. Griffith's uh, great epic. You know, whether people like it or not, they everyone agreed that when he went to the historical scenes, he meticulously did everything as accurately as possible, and people loved it. So. Hey, everybody agrees that this helped boost the the membership of the Ku Klux Klan. So. That is true. <laughs> See, we can agree on a lot of things about this, but uh, on an equally cringeworthy movie, it, we got to show American history as it is. Rufus Jones from Rufus Jones for President. That was a uh, yeah, very young Sammy Davis. Sammy Jr. Davis Jr. The Rat Pack started right. early. And of course, the premise of that movie was that a young black child is accidentally elected president, and you know, just so fun. You know, it was so funny back then to have a black president. And of course, you know, Dave Chappelle would never make a skit about that. Yeah. But you know, that was brought up, of course, all across the internet with Obama being elected. So it just goes to show how far we've come. Now. Yeah. Seventy-five years later. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So uh, Abraham Lincoln, of course, always a favorite of the early directors. John Ford made his movie Young Mr. Lincoln in 39. I thought I'd find that big mouth of yours around here telling people what to do. I'm Big Buck, all right. I'm the biggest buck in this lick. Well, come on up and wet your horns. What's <laughs> All right, that was Henry Fonda, of course, as Abraham Lincoln, one of the great actors playing one of the great presidents. And that he sort of follows his early life in Illinois, and that's where he's trying to stop a lynch mob from going in because he cares about justice, sort of like... Of course Abraham Lincoln yeah, does. Kevin Costner is still out for, for white Earp. So, Ooh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, trying to... Costner, no Henry Fonda. So, hate it's to say it. Very hate true. To break that's it to something him. true we can hear that. <laughs> we do agree on that. But uh, jumping ahead... Uh, few decades, yeah. we have one of the most hilarious presidents, uh, President Merkin Muffley from Dr. Strangelove. Hello, De Hello Dimitri. Listen, I, I can't hear too well. Do you suppose you could turn the music down just a little? Oh, oh that's much better. <laughs> yes. Fine, I can hear you now, Dimitri. Clear and plain and coming through fine. 
I'm coming through fine too, eh? Good. Then. Uh, that was Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers, yeah. a genius. <laughs> I just love it. And that scene, he's calling up the Russian president to inform them that we're going to accidentally attack their country That's with right. nuclear weapons. Always that awkward situation you have to deal with. As <laughs> yeah, president. you never hate right. having to tell Russia that. But Yeah, I mean... This I movie is a classic, not just for being a president movie, but for just being a great dark black comedy right. and satire comedy and, and everything. It's a great Kubrick film. Like, so. I think there's even two or at least... I mean, think like three or four more movies on this list that have homages just to that scene. Yeah. When, you know, inside the war room and everything. And, you know, Stephen Colbert is the president in Monster vs. Aliens. Yeah, and, exactly. Good point. Uh, well, uh, all the president's men starring a president who, well, let's just roll the tape. Mitchell started doing covert stuff before anyone else. The list is longer than anyone can imagine. It involves the entire U.S. intelligence community, FBI. Hey, speaking of Robert Redford, there yeah. he was for a second <laughs> there. There we go. There the we journalist, go. journalist movie of all time. The one that, that shows what yeah. true journalism is all yes. about. The, all about one of the taking very down few Nixon. Where we're good guys. That's yeah. right. <laughs> journalists are good guys, and they're taking down the evil Nixon, which that seems to be a prevalent theme in tonight's yeah. show. Is evil the evil Nixon. Richard Nixon. Evil so. Richard Nixon. Right. And that movie definitely uh, see if kept Isla Fisher along. ever does that. Takes yeah. Nixon down. Right, but of course, uh, you know, uh, Dustin Hoffman, Robert Redford, it's about investigating Watergate, and Nixon, you know, he's only on camera and some archival footage there, but it's about him, so you have to show yeah. all the presidents. And it man. brought the, the term deep throat into deep public throat. mainstream. Right, which is not funny at all, but we <laughs> can move on to uh, Oliver Stone's JFK. Totally inconsistent with the shot from the depository. Again, back back and to the left, back and to the left, back and to the left. Uh, JFK, uh. about the, you know, just really hard-hitting, powerful film about the investigations and all the controversy over the tragedy with President Kennedy's assassination. and Whether it's true or not, it's a, fan it's a fascinating and fantastic right. film to examine and go over to the left. Back into the left. Yeah, back, back into, into the, into left. the left. left. Over and right. again, you'll, you'll, you'll you see references to this throughout all kinds of pop culture, Seinfeld included, right. and everybody will His reference this film. His goal is to get so. people talking about the conspiracy, and it works. works. I think Dealey Plaza uh, increased its, its, hey, its visitors One of my friends just went there this. the other day, and first thing she does when she gets to Dallas, I just went through the place where Kennedy got shot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There's all kinds of people selling newspapers and conspiracy right, DVDs right. and stuff. So It really started, I mean, I, Americans always been conspiracy theaters, but this really started the modern conspiracy movement. Oh, it set it off icon. to a whole other level. That's the icon. Yeah. This movie. And it's, a, it's a great film to go along with it as well. Well, in 1993, we, you know, conspiracies that we're talking about, here's a clip from Dave. The coloring. The coloring is excellent. You, you really cut his hair this short? It's a perfect match. It doesn't come over the years? No, 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 no. You understand what you'll be doing? Uh, yeah, you, you just want me to wave. Wave from the door, come down the stairs, get into the limo. Because right. you know, if you want me to do other stuff, uh, I can. If you want me to talk... Don't say a word. All right, and Dave, we got Kevin Klein there as president. Of course, we got another future president, president in this president, scene, right. uh, Franklin, Franklin Jello. But uh, Dave is all about what happens if the president uh, gets sick, or in this case, a coma, and they don't want to let the American public know, but they want to keep everything as business as normal. So what do they bring in? They bring in a guy that looks like the president, right. and then they just pretend like everything's fine. And they take, and that's what this movie kind of right. takes on in a comedic approach. It always and, makes you wonder. Maybe Bush really did choke on a pretzel. Yeah, and that's what's been. And wrong they just brought in the a stand-in. Yeah. And this movie kind of takes on a romantic angle involving the first lady in the stand-in, and it's Ivan mm -hmm. Reitman, of course, who did Ghostbusters, just, yeah. uh, as well as other great comedies from the late '80s. And uh, this movie is is a fun little film. There's nothing groundbreaking, but you know. Hey, it's fun. It's fun, and yeah. it's got the conspiracy in it. Well, next day uh, we had the West. We, I mean, sorry, the American president. <laughs> A couple of months, Senator Rumson has suggested that being president of this country was to a certain extent about character. And although I have not been willing to engage in his attacks on me, I've been here three years and three days. And I can tell you without hesitation, being president of this country is entirely about character. All right, Michael Douglas. I'm a card-carrying member of the ACLU. I'm proud of it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the West Wing, for the most part, from what we hear, is uh, they were heavily inspired from this movie. Right. Of course, it's about uh, 
president has a love affair, a single president, not married, has a love affair with a uh, uh, lobby, energy lobbyist, yeah. right, and that Benning, and get to see how that all unfolds underneath the public eye, a little precursor to something that happened in real life a few years later. Yeah, yeah. and you get to see how the cabinet, the inner workings of the, how the cabinet interacts with the president, with Michael J. Fox as one of those. And right. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's got a lot of stars in it. It's a good romance. If you're looking for a romance. A presidential this romance, list, yeah. Right, probably so uh, Michelle Obama, if you're looking for something to watch. Either this or Dave, either this or uh, Dave. I know she watches the show every week, yeah. so that would be our recommendation. And uh, move on then to uh, <laughs> Independence Day, one of my favorite presidents ever. Good morning. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. All right, Bill Pullman, the whole world gets attacked by aliens, and he goes out there, inspires everybody, he gets in a plane himself, fights the aliens himself. This is great American president. I'm glad you like it so I don't have to. I love Independence yeah. Day. It's a <laughs> Roland Emmerich. But uh, a president who didn't handle the alien invasion quite so well was Jack Nicholson. White House is coming out live. My fellow Americans, this is a momentous occasion. It is profoundly moving to know there is intelligent life out there, alien life, and our world will never feel quite the same again. Why can't we all just get along? <laughs> this is a hilarious take on what, what would happen if the aliens yeah. took over and Tim how would the Burton, president course, respond to yeah. it. Yeah, Tim Burton and uh, Jack Nicholson plays a great president. He just kind of makes a few mistakes along the way. Just a few minor mistakes. <laughs> you thought Bush was bad. What if yeah. President James Ooh. Dale? So, yeah. uh, Could know. be worse. Could always be worse. Yeah, if you want a, a Tim Burton comedy about aliens, hey, this is your movie. But if you want a president who's not going to just try and get along, let's look at Harrison Ford in Air Force One. <laughs> All right, Harrison Ford. No nonsense. Kicking some butt. No nonsense no, there. No, we could definitely use him around. This, this, uh, this Bush tried to maybe emulate this. He wanted to be a tough guy, so well, don't mess with me. Who Bush ended up emulating? Maybe it was Morgan Freeman from Deep mm. Impact. Yeah. Soft limestone of Missouri, we've been preparing a network of immense caves, and they're almost finished. And we can put a million people in them. And that million people can survive there underground for two years until the air clears and the dust settles. All right, yeah, I didn't see the Dr. Strangelove parallel there at all. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> well, he, hey, Morgan Freeman did a, played a great role in this movie, so a good disaster movie. Yeah. Speaking of disaster movies, here's one that was averted, 13 Days. Morning, gentlemen. Our cities in the southeast, as far north as Washington, D.C., are in range of these weapons, and in the event of a launch, we'll have only five minutes warning. In those five minutes, they could kill 80 million Americans. It was clear we cannot permit Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba. Costner playing opposite a president again. We had him in swing vote. I didn't even put swing vote yeah, on here. Yeah, Costner loves being in presidential movies. I promise this is the most we'll ever show Kevin Costner on this show. <laughs> in one show. <laughs> yeah, but uh, moving on. We had just this last year a couple great president movies come out. First off, we have W. Good job. So what you want? Come on, baby. <laughs> Working in the investment firm wasn't for you either. Or the oil rig job. You didn't exactly finish up with flying colors in the Air National Guard, Junior. What are you cut out for? Parting, chasing tail, driving drunk. I got it. I got it. Oliver Stone, no conspiracy here. He's just a moron. That's pretty much the premise <laughs> of this movie. But hey, I really love Josh Brolin yeah, in this role. Brolin's fantastic. I liked him better here than I did liked him in Milk. So, I agree. Yeah. I agree as well. Well, we'll wrap things up with Prost Nixon, best picture nom. You had a pleasant evening last night? Uh, yes. Four, three, two. To do one in foreign cutting. And Hugh David. Uh, uh. The American people need a conviction. I'd like to give Richard Nixon the trial he never had. All right, 
Frost Nixon up for a couple Silver Reels awards. Yep. So be sure to vote. You only have until Thursday to vote. So get on it. Right. Next week, this Monday, 8 p.m., same time, same channel, we'll have the Silver Reels awards with the people that you pick to win. This is right. you voting. So go to RazorbackReels.com to vote in the Silver Reels Awards. Yeah. Only a few days left. We got a record number of votes, and they keep pouring in. So. There's some really, really close races. We're talking one votes and ties right now. So thanks to AMC Fiesta Square. Check them out for four dollar movies. But until next week, this is Razorback Reels. I'm Adam, and I'm Aaron. See ya.